Hello everyone, Sarah back in Valheim and I have a quick tutorial for you, or at least I hope it will be a quick tutorial. So I recently did a competition on Planeswalker and one of the things that I did in that build was I did a chandelier and there was a couple of questions about the chandelier, how I did it, so I thought I would show you some of the variations of that chandelier that I have done as well as the chandelier that I did in that build. So first one I'm going to show you is down here underneath the Elder. Now if you've ever built underneath the Elder you know that there is a, a stub, a stone uh, bit that hangs down from the ceiling or the underneath of the altar that you cannot remove. And uh, oftentimes when I build underneath of the Elder, I will turn it into a chandelier rather than having just this stump hanging down from the ceiling. So I'm going to show you that one and then when I'm done showing that to you, I'll go up, up on top and I will show you um, the chandelier that I'm going to show you right now and then I will also show you the chandelier that I did in the competition as well as a variation of that chandelier. And I will be in creative mode, so I will be flying. So first off, this is the chandelier that I'm going to first show you. I think it looks really sharp. Uh, and uh, it's a little bit different than what we normally can get in the game, just without combining pieces. So um, by combining these pieces, I, I feel like it creates this really... Um, cool pattern uh, for a chandelier. So let's go upstairs and let's get this uh, um, chandelier created for you guys. Alright, so I'm going to go into create uh, fly mode here. Alright, so I have created right here a faux uh, stump for uh, building this. Uh, this would be, like I said, um, something I would do on the underside of that elder. So what I'm going to do in order to get the chandeliers to be um, more visible is I'm going to take a piece or a sign and I'm going to line it up with the top part of that beam right there like this. And the reason I'm going to do that is this. So if you take your your uh, your wall lantern and you go into the attach snap, um, you will see that it kind of becomes a little less visible. Um, it hides behind that beam. However, if you take and put a sign there first, and then you attach uh, to the sign with the sign in between you. Now you're going to scoot it up till you can see that tip. Or you could even go do it up here and have it so that it's more tucked inside. Um, I'm going to show you right here on this edge. Uh, so you bring it up until you can see the tip of that lantern poking through at the top of the sign. And I like to line it up with that center seam uh, of, the, of the wood. And as... Oh, and I delete the wrong thing. Let's do that again without that, shall we? So line it up with that seam. And let's actually delete the sign this time. Um, but you can see that it pulls that forward enough that you can actually see uh, the diamond shape. Now, uh, on the one I did downstairs, oh, I actually did do it up a little bit higher. So for that, in that case, you would take and line it up at the bottom like this and then you would go all the way around. Uh, you want to get these as even as possible it'll help you line up your your lanterns and then you're gonna go into attach uh, down a little bit and let's zoom in. Alright so you're gonna go into the attach and then you're gonna bring it up till you can see that tip of that uh, lantern and your bottom part of the diamond is going to be at the bottom. So you line it up and place it. And then you can see 
you can still see that diamond and it creates a nice pattern on the outside as well. So you would just do this all the way around. Uh, line it up like so. And you can actually look at the lantern because you can see it down at the bottom to make sure that you get this uh, at the same height. Like that. Place your lantern. Oh. And so then you would do that all the way around and that creates that wonderful pattern on the bottom. So then this is the one that I did on the competition. Um, and it's using, you know, just the Verger lanterns and some wood. Um, so obviously, I mean, this would not be early game because you'd have to get into the mislins to get it or you'd have to be in creative mode. Um, so first off, we're going to have our beam that we're going to attach to. And you're going to put one rotation on each of these one meter beams all the way around. And this one's a little bit uh, faster, I think, than the first one I showed you there. Uh, it's a little less uh, having to line it up, a little less fiddly. It's not in there. Nope, not there. There we go. All right. So when you take the uh, Verger lanterns with this one, um, put it into the attach, you'll see it snaps to it. All right. So you're just going to one rotation and you're going to make sure you're pointing at the wood and go all the way around. And it creates uh, like this double diamond, which I think is really cool. And it creates actually quite a lot of light when you combine them. These lanterns by themselves are a little bit dim. Uh, sorry, that's my little doggy snoring. He's having a dream about something. Uh, but yeah, so just they snap to this point. Now you have two options when you get done with it uh, for how you want to finish this off. So you could leave it as is with the wood at the top or you could take the wood out like I've done on that one. Um, they will stay because they are technically attached to the center beam, not the wood here. And so you can leave this and have the wood around the top of it, or you can take it out and leave the uh, lanterns open at the top. Completely uh, up to you how you want to do that. And these would look really sharp uh, with the black uh, ash wood later on in the game as a contrast to that copper. Um, so then we're going to do one more variation of this, and this one is for like a bigger room. So it's pretty much the same concept. Uh, the only difference is when you're building this one, you'll have two snap points. You'll have one here and one here. So you, what you're going to do is you're going to snap, and then you're going to rotate twice. Snap, rotate twice, and snap all the way around. And then when you do um, the smaller version, or the lower version, you're going to um, place the beams so that they're in between the snap points, so they're offset of each other. Is that right? I think I did that one too many rotations. Let's try it. So, one, two. No, it was right. And one, two, and then when you snap your uh, smaller ones to the, you're going to put them in the middle um, between those two snap points, like so, and then rotate twice, and they're going to sit inside the upper beams. And again, your your Virgo lantern and wrote, uh, doing to the snap 
uh, attach and just line them up with the uh, beams. Now these top ones, you won't be able to delete the wood as they're actually attached to the wood, not to the center beam. But if you did this with, say, the um, ash wood, um, it would look really, really pretty. These, however, you can if you choose to delete them. You can. Um, and leave yourself a nice open pattern uh, because these lower ones are attached to the center beam. Like so. And if you wanted to leave them in there again, you could. Um, so. Like so. And it creates just a really beautiful, um, little bit, little bit larger version of that chandelier. And uh, that one, obviously, you would need um, something solid like that. However, if you had a beam running in the center and you snapped them all to the beam, you could do, you know, the open version of this. Um, so you would have to create a base like this, snap them all. Have a center beam in the middle, of course, and then uh, delete all of the extra stuff, and you could get that really beautiful pattern without uh, having all of that bulk up there. But uh, that being said, uh, that's that tutorial for you, and uh, I hope you have a good one wherever you are in your day. <laughs>